in terms of the crime problem that is um, I know is a concern to you and maybe everybody in the city of that um, for what you can say what are some of the measures that is being put in place to tackle it and what is your request also from the citizens sure I think I think first and foremost, it's important to know that the perception of crime is actually higher than the amount of crime that we have. And that's one of the biggest issues that we face in the, in the city of Danville. You know, a lot of people think that in the crime that we do have is usually not random. And I think it's very important that people know that. Um, most of the crime that's perpetuated is by someone who knows the person that they're committing the crime against. I'll give you two recent examples. Uh, the the break-in we had recently, uh, the armed the armed rob the armed attempted armed robbery where one of one of the perpetrators was killed by the person living in the home, they knew one another, they were friends. Okay, this most recent uh, tragedy that we had with the triple homicide the other day, one of the young men who committed the crimes was the nephew of two of the the men who were killed. So this was not, neither of these were cases where some random person burst into someone's home to come and kill them or rob them. So I want people to know, when you hear about the crime in Danville, 90% of it is perpetrated by people against people that they know. And sadly, a lot of the times, the people that commit the crime are definitely involved um, in the game of drugs, alcohol, or, um, or gang activity. Um, and sadly, mo a lot of the times, the people that are victims of crime are. The exceptions would be these three gentlemen who were just brutally killed last week, and of course, the delivery drivers. Okay. And uh, so, with, with bearing, bearing that in mind, that, that creates a challenge. It does. Um, so, from, from where you sit, how or what is being done to address um, these type of situation? Uh, a number of things are being done. Uh, one thing is that we have not been up to full manning for our police force. Uh, just two weeks ago, I swore in the latest police officer. That puts us up to the full number that the budget allows. And I think having more police officers available on the streets is certainly a help. But the bigger thing that's going to happen is starting in May, we are going to, now that we're at full force, we're going to be able to put in our proactive units. Our POP unit, which, which stands for Problems Oriented Policing, our Community Housing Unit, as well as our Traffic and Interdiction Unit. What happens right now is a lot of times our police are so busy, they're going from one call to the next. It doesn't leave them time to build relationships with the public. It doesn't allow them to be, do proactive surveillance and things like that. With the POP unit in place, with the criminal housing unit and the traffic and interdiction unit, that will allow officers time to build. They will not be on a beat. They will not be running from call to call. It will allow them time to build relationships, greater relationships with our citizens. It will allow them to be proactive in areas where we know that we're having problems. So that's number one. The second thing is um, we've received a grant from the state of Illinois, and hopefully by the end of June, at the absolute latest, we will be installing cameras um, throughout the community, particularly in areas where we've had a lot of problems. What will this do? It will allow the criminals to know that they're being watched. Number two, God forbid something bad should happen. It will provide us actual evidence of what's happening because even if we don't see the individual committing the crime, we will be able to see them leaving, coming to or leaving the scene of the crime. Uh, the third thing that we are, are doing is uh, we now have a, a person in place who is helping coordinate these outreach efforts um, to the community. So, you know, our police are spending more time with the citizens at various events. They're going to schools and neighborhood associations and talking to children, to older adults, and building those relationships. So those are the things that we're doing. We are making sure that we have the manpower, we're making sure that we're strategic with it, and we're building relationships with our citizens um, so as to create a culture where people feel safe and they feel comfortable coming forward as well if something bad does happen and they, they, can, they can acknowledge that. Okay. 
The other thing that's critical is in building those relationships, that's what allows us to solve, time, solve crimes. We say, see something, say something. You know what? The reason why we're able to, to, to find the perpetrators of the triple homicide so quickly is that someone spoke up, someone was brave, um, someone provided information, and guess what? We were able to make that arrest within five hours. Within five hours, we had the men who committed this crime. Whereas we have others that have been outstanding for years. Why? What is the difference in these cases? Unfortunately, in some of the older cases, folks didn't come forward. As, as good as our police are and as proactive as they're trying to be, they can't be everywhere at once. And that's why it's critical for the citizens and the police to work together to take back our community. Perfect. I, I agree with that 100%. Right. So um, I was about to segue um, unemployment. into unemployment. First, um, do you have any idea what is the level of an unemployment now in the, in the city? I don't know the exact percentage rate, but I can tell you in recent times, we've had the lowest unemployment rate that we've had in over 30 years. Um, you know, all the time I hear, oh, there are no jobs in Danville, or there are no good paying jobs in Danville. That simply isn't true. You go to the Vermilion Advantage Jobs Board, you go to the city website, you go to indeed.com, and there are a host of jobs. There are hundreds of jobs that are available at any, any given time. Places where folks can start out making $15, $16 an hour and within a year or, or two be making $20 plus dollars an hour. Places where you like, um, like Danville metal stamping. Um, you know, you can be a felon. You know, you can have smoked marijuana and they'll hire you. And guess what? Within 90 days of hire, you have, um, you have a retirement. You have a contribution to your 401k. You have insurance for yourself and your family. So there are good jobs with benefits here in town, but unfortunately, sometimes people don't avail themselves of those opportunities. Danville Metal, for example, that I just mentioned, um, their CEO has told me that in order to keep one employee, he has to hire four people. So something that I see us needing to do and to work on as we move forward is to invest in our youth, particularly ages 15 to 25, to help them have not only job skills but life skills. Our youth have to understand you can't come to work whenever you want to. You can't talk back or talk crazy to your boss. Those are things which will cost you your job. But unfortunately, when we live in a culture that doesn't require accountability, uh, then we end up with young people making bad choices, and then they're going from job to job to job. Meanwhile, we have employers begging for good people to work with them. Okay. Our next concern here in Danville, a lot of people, is the Collins Tower here yes. on Main Street. Um, it's, I'm looking through your window now, and I saw the barricades to for safety. When when are we going to get some closure to, to this? Unfortunately, it's a longer process than what I would like. We are going to have some immediate relief. Um, within the next couple of weeks, we have bought uh, concrete barriers, which will be placed within the lane nearest the building, and fencing will be set up inside of those. That will allow us to open all but one lane on Main Street again. That's a temporary remedy. In the meantime, we have secured estimates on what it will cost to tear the building down. Uh, we're looking at $1.35 million for both Brzee Tower. I call it Brzee because the Collins haven't done anything worth it bearing their name. Um, Brzee Tower and the courthouse annex which surrounds it. That doesn't include, however, asbestos abatement and filling in the hole that will be left from the buildings there. Um, so what we are doing is we're putting some temporary measures to help traffic flow as soon as possible. In the meantime, we've got estimates. Now we have to come forward with a plan on how we work to get it demolished. So, and my the obvious question is, um, is the city in a position to pay that amount of money now for for that de demolition? Uh, what I would tell you is, thankfully, yes. Now, would I choose to spend that kind of money on that type of project? I would not. That would never be my first choice, of course. But it's creating a safety issue for the people of Danville. The good news is, uh, when I took over in in uh, November of 2018, we were projected to only have $300,000 in our reserve, whereas uh, our ordinance doesn't require, but it strongly recommends you have at least $1.2 million. 
Well, we ended last year with $1.45 million in our reserve. Um, this fiscal year, we'll likely end with a little bit more than $3.6 million in our reserve. What does that mean? That means that thankfully I'll have you know, 1.6 to $2 million of money that we can allocate for various projects. Sadly, because the owners haven't uh, met their obligations, then, the ta then that money would be used to secure the demolition. And again, I, I would simply like to say, I, I think the Collins were well-intentioned people, but unfortunately they don't have, they never had to have, and nor do they now have the resources to make their dreams come to reality. Okay, okay. All right, um, the casino, um, is there any updates on that? So unfortunately with the state, it's always a game of hurry up and wait, right? So they gave us four months to do everything that we need to secure who we want to be our operator, et cetera, whereas they gave themselves three, much as, three times as much or a whole year. So technically they have until September 30th of this year to give us an answer. It's my hope that they won't take that long, but um, we're, we're simply waiting right now. What I can offer to you and the people is that we have had a couple of in inquiries from the Illinois Gaming Board about our project, which means they are at least reviewing our application. That's a good sign. I can also tell you in talking with the developers of the project um, that uh, they are about to begin talks with the Boys and Girls Club and with the DACC about some of the financial promises they made so that as soon as we um, hit the ground and they get that application, we'll be able to start um, taking advantage of some of those community investments that they promised us. Okay. And the other um, big ticket item was the um, marijuana dispensary. Sure. Is there anything reconstruction? How, how is that coming along? Uh, so the latest update on that is that the company has not yet received their, their application hasn't been approved. Uh, and so they have not done any work to the building yet. As of earlier this afternoon, I spoke with my director of public works, and they have not even pulled the permit to begin working on the building yet. So unfortunately, right now, we're in a bit of a holding pattern. Is the, there anything else that you want to touch on that? Sure. Uh, one of the things that people ask me about all the time as well is the Carl Project and what's going on with that. I'm excited. Uh, we had a meeting with them last week, a pre-construction meeting, and they are slated to begin uh, demolitions within the next two weeks. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. My birthday is February 6th, and I think it's a fantastic present uh, to have that redevelopment begun. Okay, nice, nice. And what, 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 what about the... Um persons who are opposing to that project. Is everybody on board now? Well, of course, you always have folks who are not going to be satisfied with, uh, with the direction that you're moving. But I think most people realize now the great benefit that this project is going to bring to the community. And I would say the vast majority of folks are very supportive. I saw you made a Facebook post today um, talking about an app Yes. What can you tell us about it? I'm really excited about our new reporting app. It's called Report It, uh, simply enough. And it's a way for people to report any kind of problems that they're having in their neighborhood. For example, you have a pothole on your street. You need your alley graded. Uh, there's a house with overgrown weeds or that's in disrepair. You can go in and report this online. I'm really proud because one of our own staff members created this program in-house. Previously, we were paying more than $10,000 a year for a program that wasn't functioning properly. What was happening, people entered their information and the, 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 uh, the appropriate city staff were not being notified. So then you have people that are very angry because they're not, the city's not doing anything, but the city didn't receive the notification. Well, then when we finally received enough calls knowing that there was some kind of problem and we call the, the, the software developer, they say to us, they take two weeks to get back to us. 
So now you have frustrated citizens, frustrated staff, and nothing is getting accomplished. Oh, and by the way, we're paying them for nothing to get accomplished. So what I'm really thankful about and proud of is that um, Adam All, who's our GIS uh, manager, he's the one who created this program. So it allows us complete flexibility. Something goes wrong, we created it, we know how to fix it, and we've saved the taxpayers more than $10,000 a year. So I'm very excited. It actually just went live this morning. Oh, oh, so it's, it's up and running. It's up and running, and it's actually on our web page, on, on the uh, home page of the city of Danville. You click on the icon, it leads you right in. What I love about it is it's simple. You don't have to create an account. You, you can do things anonymously if you want to. There's a dashboard where you can see wh what other people have reported. So let's say you have a problem with a pothole. Maybe someone has already reported that, so you don't have to report it again. It's very user friendly, um, and it will allow us to help meet the needs of our citizens in a more efficient manner. Can it be used in the crime fighting, in the effort of crime fighting, if somebody have a tip or something, can they use that to? No, this is only for non-emergent situations. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> for, for crime fighting and such, we of course would like people to call the um, our non-emergency number, 431-2250. That takes you to the police department, or if not that, if you want to make sure that you're completely anonymous, then to call 446-TIPS, uh, and that's the um, the the hotline for Crime Stoppers. Okay. Okay.